everyone. Christine Johnson from Channel 2 once again. And Al Alfred Doblin from The Record. <laughs> nice to see you again, Alfred. Good to see you. So we're here once again talking about the upcoming New Jersey governor's debate, which um, the Bergen Record, along with um, CBS2 and along with William Patterson University, will be hosting on October 18th. That is a Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. We will be broadcasting it on all sorts of different platforms, and then it will be all over your paper the following day. It will day. be everywhere. You look anywhere in New Jersey, any diner, you'll see us. <laughs> All right, so we are continuing the discussion that we started on uh, Thursday. And we had a lot of really good questions and, and issues that were brought up from our viewers and readers. Yeah, I think despite that this is kind of a low radar kind of campaign, I think mm -hmm. people are very much um, starting to get into it. At least the folks who are intending to, to vote are starting to ask some serious questions. And up until recently, it's been more of a campaign of issues. Now it's getting a little bit into right. personalities. The mud is starting to, mm -hmm. to move around a bit in New Jersey. But What's the big headline today? Any big headline today or not so status quo? I think on the, on the gubernatorial campaign, I, I don't know if there's really a big headline. They're moving more into is, is Murphy really John Corzine is Kim Guadano, really Chris Christie. Mm -hmm. and, and I think they're both trying you know, to, to get into that. Also, there's a little bit now with the trial of Bob Menendez, U.S. Senator, senior yes. senator. Uh, the Murphy camp is trying to uh, sort of conflate the two. Uh, she was, her, someone in her campaign was down, I think, in Trenton last week handing out M&Ms. Um, Murphy Menendez. <laughs> So, and it wasn't sugar-coated. Oh so, uh, so it's getting a little, you know, I don't know how the folks at M&M are happy, because they're, they're in yeah. Jersey. That's Mars, I believe. But that's, yes, I think, a, that's, and that's a Jersey, yeah. a Jersey-based company. So, I don't know. I, I wouldn't mess know. with those M&M guys. M&Ms, I don't think, they, they don't take a stand on red or blue, do they? No, Santa. <laughs> they take a stand on Santa, but not not at all on Jersey politics. <laughs> no, so. definitely not. All right, well, let's get to some of the, um, some of the issues that are, uh, viewers and readers and Facebook friends and Reddit friends have all been um, contacting us about. This is from Doreen Longo, it came to us on Facebook, and she would like to know if either of the candidates would consider getting rid of the 23 cent gas tax, getting rid of the new opioid law, and also decriminalization of marijuana. We did touch on marijuana last week, but um, what about the gas tax? Well, the gas tax is interesting because probably one of the first times that the lieutenant governor, Kim Budano, broke with Christie was on the gas tax. She was against it. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a little bit of friction on that. Murphy was for it. I mean, it was sort of seen as the basic deal to keep the Transportation Trust Fund, which funds a lot of road projects, infrastructure projects in the city, uh, in, in the state afloat. I don't think she has said she would get rid of it now that it's there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's, um, I think that's an interesting question because you, if you don't get rid of it, um, how do you, how do you, know, do you just say, Where well, you I'm, money? well, yeah, and actually the, the, it doesn't really do enough anyway. So there's a lot of issues that the 23 cents basically keeps everything afloat. Mm -hmm. um, there is some conversation, you know, whether there might be an increase in the federal gas tax, so then this gas tax goes up. We've seen gas prices start to spike because of hurricane. uh, hurricanes or perhaps price gouging, perhaps. Um, so that may also be in people's minds going into the polls in November. Do they want someone who's going to cut their taxes, supposedly, mm -hmm. or someone who's just going to raise their taxes? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the gas tax is an, interesting, uh, is an interesting question. I don't think either candidate would change anything in the opioid law. I mean, I think that's probably the area, uh, everything that the gov Governor Christie has done on uh, drug courts reform, drug thing, I think he's, um, you can't, Flaw, uh, he's flawless. Very well I mean, supported. There, there's, uh, I mean, he's he's on the right side of the issue. Um, he's been leading that issue. I can't imagine either candidate would break with him on that. And one of the mandates now about um, drug treatment centers is that the state will um, provide the um, the payment for that, right? For the first, like, was it ninety I think, days? I think or it's the first the first ninety days. First ninety days. Um, and and I don't think anyone would want to change that. Mm -hmm. In the same way that it, it, it might come off of this question, you know, Christie led the way for bail reform, which was extraordinarily progressive, uh, but it is part of his law enforcement background that, other than uh, you know, serious. Uh, 
crimes where there's uh, violent crimes, um, most people are not being given bail. So, I mean, they, they don't have to post bail, so they're able to go free uh, on their own recognizance. And, and that, I think, is, um, is another area that some people may have some issues with. And just to refresh some of the, um, some of the views on the legalization of marijuana, your point was there's really just not a feeling out there that it's, it's something that New Jersey it, really wants. Well, I, I think it's a mixed issue. Murphy is all for it. And I think Murphy believes if you uh, make pot legal, you know, you can buy it in stores, you know, there's a new tax base to come from that. I don't know if that's true. I think um, he's, you know, he's, he's blowing the wrong smoke on this one. Mm -hmm. um. I was just handed a piece of paper, and this just in, <laughs> so to speak. Um, we would obviously love to have our Facebook friends that are watching us right now via Facebook chime in with their questions or comments as we sit here for the next um, however long we can uh, keep this conversation going tonight, right? There's no time limit, so we'll keep it going as long as we keep getting some interesting People may views. be voting by the time we're done, <laughs> so if you want to well, have your comments in here. <laughs> Then we would have passed the debate. <laughs> well, we have early voting. Anyway. Yes, that's true. All right. So by all means, if you're watching us on Facebook or whatever platform you're watching us on right now, um, feel free to chime in and um, offer some suggestions uh, and just join the conversation. We welcome any voice out there. Just make sure we, we keep it clean and we um, keep it... Uh... Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Like, I don't really think... Well. I mean, obviously, we're going to keep it clean, but there was really one, one great question uh, that we got last week that, that we thought was, it was a bit humorous, and that was, what's your favorite fr fruit, oh, right? Fruit, Since we're fruit the garden state. Was it fruit and vegetable? Fruit and vegetable, it was I fruit think and vegetable. It was. It was an inclusive con yeah, comment. Yeah, because, you know, we are the garden state, so why not ask the candidates that? I thought that was very clever and uh, a le very legitimate point. So let's move on. Um, this is from Yahoo Hammer on Reddit. Any plans on merging... Um, some municipalities and townships to provide cost savings to taxpayers. I know that there's been talk about um, consolidating like waste management and those types of services, but what about merging municipalities and townships? You know, there's lots of conversation about this, but in my, I would say about 17 years or so covering New Jersey, I think Princeton Township and Princeton Borough or whatever, the only two that have ever consolidated. Mm -hmm. Both candidates, I'm sure, will say that we want to see more of these kind of consolidations. But the thing is, you cannot force, um, the state can't force municipalities to decide to become, you know, different than they are. Mm -hmm. There's still that autonomous rule, home rules, though, sure. is the phrase. And that's very big in New Jersey. Don't, don't tread on anyone's little well, boundaries. Yeah, and I mean, when people buy a home in a certain town, they become, they take ownership of that and they don't want to merge with, with another nearby municipality. Right. They don't want to do it for, because of schools, they don't want to do it because they feel they'll, they won't know their local police, but also, you know, the other side, because it is New Jersey, um, a lot of the resistance, I don't know if it's so much from the average person as it is from the people who have the municipal jobs, mm. you know, because you can make a lot of money doing things in New Jersey that make no sense in terms of the cost of you know where you are. A small municipality might have a police force where the police chief is making more than the police chief in New York, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which they do. That doesn't seem right, does it? <laughs> uh, let's see, Wendy from Facebook. Uh, how are they planning to lower property tax to lure people back into the state? Guidano has this really interesting idea. I put that interesting in quotes, you know, so you just see the quotes there. Um, she has this thing called a circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's supposed to be like a circuit breaker in your house, you know, when it gets too overloaded, it's going to pop. Yeah. Um, her thinking is that, uh, the, that the state should come in, I believe, if your property taxes reach the point where they are more than 5% of your income. The okay. school the school tax portion of your property tax, and it's capped at a certain number. I want to say it's maybe capped at three grand, but I could be wrong about that difference. Um, the state would make up that difference between what that 5% is and what the bill is. Hmm. Now, it's a, it's a 
It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting idea, um, but the question that everyone is asking is, well, how do you pay for it? Mm -hmm. Now, she wants to do an audit, you know, the state government, and believes that there's a lot of waste, fraud, and abuse, uh, but there's a lot of skepticism that there's enough waste, fraud, and abuse to fund this. Mm -hmm. um, Murphy doesn't talk about tax cuts. So that's an, that's a that's a that's a real issue. The Guadano camp is also wondering whether Murphy will support uh, keeping the two percent cap on uh, uh, arbitration for like cops and firefighters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Guadano wants uh, to keep the cap. Uh, Murphy is saying he wants to wait for this blue ribbon panel that's supposed to come out at the end of the year with a. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would also affect property taxes because that's a key part of what your you know the, the local police add up into to, to a lot of money. So when you say Murphy is not talking about tax cuts right now, is it because he doesn't support it, or is it because he just doesn't quite he isn't quite well, ready to talk the, about the it? The tax cuts that he's talking about like are millionaires' tax. Mm -hmm. So if you make if, if you make as much money as Phil Murphy has made, you, you know, you'd be paying more. Um, but he's talking about increasing a lot of services that the state doesn't do right now. Mm -hmm. So it is hard to see how anyone's taxes will, will drop. Because of that. But I'm sure he will explain more on November 18th at 7 p.m. Because we'll ask him. Yes, we will. <laughs> All right. Alex from Reddit says, uh, I don't know if Alex is a man or a woman, but Alex wants to know if there's any plans for increasing jobs, attracting new businesses from small independent shops to Amazon's new center. We did touch on that one, right, didn't we? Yeah, they're, on Thursday? they both are doing their own thing about that in their own way. I mean, uh, Murphy, um, I believe, is, is they, I think they've said like Murphy or his team of, of other entrepreneur wealthy folks are you know reaching out to people in the business community I think um, Guidano is doing similar things on a on a more grassroots level they mm -hmm. both uh, everybody wants to get uh, 50,000 50,000 full-time jobs yeah that's a lot that's of jobs. a lot of jobs yeah yeah so like definitely a lot of people uh, JC on reddit is curious about New Jersey class loans JC says that they're destroying people's lives, no option for rehabilitation out of default, high interest, um, no income-based plans. So if um, people uh, default on these, they just keep digging themselves deeper into Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know really much about the NJ class loans. I've not heard a lot of conversation on it. So um, I think it's something for us and our little group to discuss and see where it fits as a, as a debate question. Do a bit of research on it, figure out some more. So we'll, we'll do that, JC. We'll promise we'll definitely make note of that one. From Reddit, uh, what do they plan to do about the state's crumbling infrastructure, poor quality roads, construction projects that they never finish? More and more people are moving to North Jersey, but the capacity at NJ Transit and PATH hasn't been able to keep up. They are crowded trains and crowded yeah. buses in northern New Jersey. I've seen them. Yeah, I, I, I take NJ Transit every single mm -hmm. day, so I know, I know what they're talking about. Well, there are a couple of things in that. I, I mean, obviously, both of them will say, we want to invest in infrastructure. That's a pretty safe conversation sure. that they're all going to say. Um, Murphy will make a point of saying, uh, Chris Christie killed the Arc Tunnel, mm -hmm. which was a fully funded... Um, sort of fully funded uh, rail project that would have brought a new tunnel under the Hudson uh, strictly for NJ transit use. Mm -hmm. uh, and when, when he put the squash on that, didn't we end up having to pay money back or something? <laughs> Wasn't there some, some I think there was some note? money, there was some side money that had to go back for, I maybe did have to go back for the, to the, to the feds because yeah. there's some fed but it, the main the, the main issue was he was saying um, you know there was no guarantee for the cost overruns which is legitimate okay that's a legitimate issue and the record you know had issues with the arc tunnel because of the depth it mm -hmm. was 185 feet below street level which is higher than the statue of liberty is from her toes to her torch so that's a lot to get up mm -hmm. but um, the real reason that most people, though, have looked at the politics of it is that Christie didn't want to raise taxes. 
Um, he didn't want to come up with that 23, per, 33 cent gas tax mm -hmm. for the transportation trust fund. He needed to do things. You know, he needed to fix the Skolaski uh, the Skolaski Skyway, mm -hmm. Pulaski Skyway, Pulaski Skyway, <laughs> uh, and he needed to do things where he needed a huge chunk of money. Mm -hmm. So that gave him a huge chunk of money. Um, bottom line, though, is we still need a tunnel. So Murphy is going to say, look, you're attached to Chris Christie, he killed the Ark Tunnel, you know, and he's going to focus more on that than how you fund the new things going forward. But there's a lot of conversation that there's going to be some kind of user fee of sorts that, you know, if you were going into Penn Station, there'll be something tacked onto your, you know, the cost of your ticket. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be an issue. There's some conversation I've heard that Murphy wants to do some kind of privatization on a limited basis, maybe for the, uh, I believe, the turnpike. You know, that was a Corzine thing, asset monetization. Mm -hmm. Two words that should never go together. I mean, it was, you know, I mean, it was like basket, deplorables, bad idea. Um, and if he does talk a little bit more about that, I'm sure that Guadano people will start asset monetization sure. all over his asset monetization. Well, there's no doubt, though, that we have to maintain the, the public transportation system. Oh, absolutely. And I think both of them uh, recognize that this, if you would probably, from my standpoint, looking from a North Jersey thing, if you probably look at one of the single largest failures of the Christie administration is there's not been a real investment in mass transit. There has not been an investment in the big lift uh, infrastructure issues aside from the Pulaski Skyway and raising the Bayonne Bridge, which was a joint project with the Port Authority mm -hmm. of New York and New Jersey, and same thing with the rebuilding the Gothels. Mm -hmm. um, this is a big issue. This is a big issue. I mean, we went through the summer of well, purgatory, yeah. maybe not hell, um, yeah. and, um, and it's still continuing and to some level. Yeah, it's an aging system. We've got to make sure that we put some money into it. From Reddit, how can we fix the issue of taxes and fees not being specifically directed toward their intended targets unless constitutionally required, for example? Oh, and then it gives me a, sorry. I wasn't well, able to follow this link beforehand. But, but the, well, the, the, it's an interesting, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag mm -hmm. because once you dedicate something by uh, put it into the Constitution, the state Constitution, you don't have a lot of flexibility. And, and some of the things that we're, you know, we're codifying really should be legislative issues. They should happen in real time between an active legislature that could actually override the veto of a governor, which mm -hmm. this legislature has never done with Christie, um, and a governor. Uh, so I think what you need is, I think the, what both candidates will probably want to say is, you know, I'm really going to work with legislate, legislators on, on, on real smart fixes. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a mistake for a lot of this to just get thrown into the Constitution because it's, it's, it's making it harder and harder for future governors um, to make decisions. If the economy really tanks, um, all this money is being locked in for certain functions. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, I, but clearly, I'm sure the, this, this writer is concerned about the way uh, a lot of funds have been raided. Uh, that's partly how NJ Transit's funded. I mean, I believe some money is coming from the clean air, clean energy, or clean air fund. I mean, there's funding coming from sources that it shouldn't. But I don't think the Constitution is probably going to be the best place, and my guess is neither candidate is going to want to see that. All right. If you're just joining us here on Facebook, we're having our second town hall. We have another one scheduled tomorrow that will be um, hosted um, by my counterpart in Philly. And um, you will also I will be, be there, there too, yes. talking more about some of the southern um, Jersey uh, issues, um, concentrating in that area since we want to give equal love to northern <laughs> and southern. It's all one happy state. Jersey, exactly. But we're um, discussing issues that uh, we would like to know you're curious about. So if you have some input, by all means. Feel free to drop us a note on Facebook as we continue to talk about the issues that we would like to discuss with the candidates for governor in New Jersey when they have their first debate on October 18th. It's a Wednesday night, 7 p.m. It'll be held at William Patterson University. 
I will be moderating, moderating the debate. We'll have a great panel, which will include Alfred Doblin from the record. And um, it'll be a good night. We were able to do the debate four years ago. That turned out to be successful. I think so. There was an election. Somebody got elected. It went the way it was supposed to. We're actually the second debate, just so. Oh, we are the second we debate. Are the, we're, well, technically, we're the third debate, but we're the second gubernatorial debate. Okay. But we're, uh, we're where you want to, you want, you want to watch both we of them? I we were the first one. No, the first we're. First one, we were the first one. We're, Did we're, I get that wrong? That's okay. <laughs> that's, why, that's why there's two of us here. <laughs> <laughs> You're keeping me straight. <laughs> I'm going to refresh this page just to see if, uh, if we were able to get some new questions here. Let's see. Refresh. Did you see it blink? Now it did. Now, now it, it did. did something. Yeah? Oh, yes, here it is. Here's a new question. This one is from Arlene on Facebook. Proper oversight and accountability are severely lacking within the agencies responsible for rendering public health and protection programs and services which um, administrates services for children, family, disabled, and the elderly. Um, if elected, what would you do to ensure the rights of the constituents while receiving all of these services in the Department of Human Services? Um, I, there's an incomplete sentence here, but basically she's talking about um, making sure that there's accountability and oversight to ensure that these services are available and they're um, administered in the right way. I mean, I think it's an interesting question. If I, if I recall, um, there's been a consolidation of where some some of these services used to fall into a different umbrella, is now under a different umbrella. Um, I, I think it's a good question. I'm not, sh I think it's one of those questions that depends on your situation, how pressing it is, I how pressing an issue it's become in the campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's, a, that's probably um, something to consider because cl clearly, um, particularly I think, uh, more issues with the disabled and the elderly fall under the radar more than I think in terms of child services. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nicole Pace uh, contacted us via Facebook. Thank you, Nicole. And she said that if the candidates uh, continue to raise taxes, causing many lifelong New Jerseyans and businesses to leave the state, then how will the state continue to thrive with so many people leaving and not enough people to pay into the budgets? For illegal immigrants and community college benefits, so is, is that first of all, is that an, is that a threat? Well, is that you know, there's different schools of thought about how why people leave New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there are some people that obviously, I think there are people that do leave the state because it gets costly in terms of their retirement. Um, there are people who will argue, even you know, not just Democrats but Republicans, that uh, a lot of folks that move into New Jersey because it is still it. It, its proximity to its part of the, the metropolitan region, um, but I, there's well, there are two things there. I mean, I, I, I think I'm, I'm making a read into this, but you know, when someone puts in to pay, you know, for illegal, for illegal immigrants, immigrants, I don't really know what what we're what Ill illegal immigrants leave the phrase aside or are costing. If the argument is that we educate children regardless of their immigration status, um, I mean, that's not a negotiable item, you know, mm -hmm. that's not even a negotiable item for governors. Um, the community college benefits, I mean, the, the Murphy wants free community college. Um, he's not going as far at this point, but I think he'd like to go as far as Governor Cuomo has in New York, where he would like everybody to be able to go to a state school for free. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a fabulous goal. There's no question it's about it. Perk. But um, New Jersey isn't New York. And, and that is a, you know, I, I think there's a, that is a, that part of that question, I think is a really good thing for us to bring up because it, it gets, it, it gets into the governance issue. Mm -hmm. You know, great idea. You may truly believe in it. I'm not dismissing his, you know, his interest in it, but how do you fund it? And mm -hmm. if you fund it, does it mean, okay, we're giving free community college, but somebody else's property taxes are going up, or there's a service that someone can't afford? Uh, but I think it's an interesting issue because New York has been a leader. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think it's an interesting dynamic because Governor Cuomo, as, as sort of Governor Christie's sort of star sort of started going into the descent, I think Governor Cuomo has really become more and more aggressive in his agenda. And he has a very strong sort of local state agenda. Sure. He's not, whatever his amb ambitions are beyond New York. So I think that's adding also to the sense of, like I think Murphy's looking at that more than Guadano because mm -hmm. Murphy's a Democrat. You know, how do, we, how do we compete with New York? How do I react to this governor? Well, Cuomo's that's out there spending a bunch of money. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, he's he is, improving, he is. you know, transit, which is great. And he's also lighting up all the bridges and <laughs> some of the tunnels. And they're very pretty. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> landscapes. I, you know, if you can't go to Vegas and see that, 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 whatever that. The Bellagio. Yeah, thank you. The, yes. the Bellagio where they play Debussy yes. or something. You can um, come to New you, York you City. Can, you can take go a, to. Take the bridges. Yeah, the Kosciuszko. <laughs> Uh, we're not lighting up the Gothels yet, and, and I don't know what the deal is on the governor's, on the, the Mario M. Cuomo bridge, if that's going to have lights. Um, good question. I, I thought all of the bridges eventually were going to have them, but we'll have to fact check that one, because I, I was pretty sure, at least I know when I saw the renderings, I know a lot of the East uh, River bridges I saw were all Maybe lit Maybe the up. GWV will be lit like halfway up to the... <laughs> up to the line. Well, they do have those lights on it now that are supposed to be pink, but they look purple. Do you know? Do you are you familiar with those? It's usually around Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Oh, okay. No, I haven't. I haven't. Ta um, September, October time frame. Take a look. They look purple. Okay. So we'll, we'll have to put a little more pink into those into those hues. And then there are times, just like um, on 9/11, when they light up the um, the arches. Yeah, I think all that. White. But I mean, I think that. You know, I don't think people have any issue with that. I think no, some no, of the, no. you know, and, and the light shows are, you know, I think. They're very pretty. Yeah, and if, I think if you could find a sponsor, you know, to mm -hmm. underwrite some of that, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't dispute the fact that the, these bridges could be aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, it's a great tourism draw, too. Come to our bridges. The bridges of Brooklyn and Queens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about this? Um, Matthew, well, Matthew, um, it's not quite fair because, uh, he, Ma well, Matthew asks if a candidate, um, if an elect elected official, uh, if the candidates think that an elected official should resign from office if convicted of a crime. Well, as you mentioned, Senator Menendez is on trial right now, has not been convicted. Um, but if, a, if an elected official is convicted of a crime, they usually end up resigning anyway. In the well, end. yeah, and Guidano is trying to force Murphy to say, you know, if he is, you will do this. Mm -hmm. And clearly Murphy doesn't want to go into that hypothetical. Mm -hmm. But there is a real issue here because the, the current governor is a Republican mm -hmm. and the next governor may be a Democrat. So what a lot of Republicans want to see happen they first want to see Senator Menendez, who is innocent until proven otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, convicted. They want to see him convicted soon. Mm -hmm. You know, they want they want a really strong kind of uh, jury, you know, uh, reaction that he's convicted on everything. They want they want them just to be as nasty a, uh, a trial as you can get, so that he's convicted sometime before the end of this year. And there's then a momentum by Mitch McConnell in the Senate to try to get him removed, mm. which you need. Um, it's more than 60 votes, I believe. It's a, I forgot the, the exact number. I don't know why 72 is coming to my head, but I'm sure somebody, if you're, if you're watching on Facebook and you're a constitutional lawyer, former you President Obama, it. please. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you're watching. Let us know. I think it's 72. Um, but you need, a, you need a substantial number of, or maybe it's 68. Maybe it's 68, but you need a substantial if number of Democrats. If I had my phone, I'd Google it for but you, but you, I don't. Um, that's where that's coming from. Okay. They really want Governor Christie to be able to appoint a Republican to that seat, will sit in that seat until November of next year when they have a fighting chance of winning. Right. That's the end game there. Yep, yep. Uh, we had some questions about clean energy, which we talked about last week, um, also making New Jersey more affordable for businesses and families. Um, we touched on that actually a bit last week as well. I'm going to refresh this page to see if we've gotten some new questions um, or comments since we started the discussion. Okay, another one from Matthew and JD on Facebook. How do the candidates support single payer health care? And how will they pay for universal health care? I think those are those are good questions. I'm not sure, you know, to be honest, I should know this, and I just, I'm, I know that Cory Booker has come out in the last week on the single payer health care mm -hmm. coming, uh, coming out with uh, Senator Sanders. So I'm not sure where, um, where Murphy is. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, my guess is that the lieutenant governor is not jumping up and down on a single payer. I mean, she's a Republican. I would think she'd want to see uh, the current Affordable Care Act 
repealed and mm -hmm. replaced? Um, I think it's a good question. I think we should, I think when, as we explore how we get something on health care, I think the other component is um, how, do you have any sense of how you're going to react if the ACA is repealed? Um, you know, how hard will you fight for the current Medicaid, ex uh, the current medic, yeah, medic, Medicaid expansion uh, to to stay because Governor Christie has been progressive as mm -hmm. a Republican governor. You know he didn't have a problem. His view was this is federal money, why not insure people? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we would probably want to look at that, but then also look at the the more realistic thing that could happen in the next say year. Um, you know, do you have a sense of what you would do if this disappears? Um, if it's modified, how hard are you going to fight to keep certain things that exist in New Jersey? Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's, there's a couple of questions in there. Yep. As we um, hit the bottom of the hour here, just a reminder that we are discussing some of the issues that are important to residents in New Jersey as we prepare for the governor's debate that we will be hosting along with the record and also with William Patterson University. We had the honor of hosting um, the past debate four years ago. We thoroughly enjoyed our time preparing and executing. It was actually a very um, informational evening. I yeah. think that there was um, some great discussion. There was some levity as well, which was, was Governor Christie's good for that, right? A little bit of levity now and then. Oh, he can be charming when he wants to be. I mean, he really can be a fun personality mm -hmm. when he wants to be. I doubt Guadano, though, will, will be making any campaign stops with him. You know, there was a fundraising event about a week ago, private, that, you know, he raised a lot of money. I would think she will keep her distance um, in the same way um, that, you know, I, I would be surprised if, you know, Phil Murphy was seen in the courthouse in, for the Menendez trial. Um, I think they'll be careful about where they are. I, but I think uh, she's certainly not shy about, you know, making use of the governor's uh, fundraising skills, mm -hmm. which are still... Yeah. Darn impressive. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Any word about what he's going to be doing? Um, I know he was up for the sports gig. Yeah, which he never wanted. I forgot what his yeah. phrase was. It's probably not arable anyway. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, some people think he may, you know, do some sort of cable thing, you know, mm -hmm. be a commentator on, on one of the, um, for those people who actually choose to watch cable instead of WCBS. Uh, but uh, he might end up, you know, in some kind of high profile, you know, law position mm. somewhere. I think it's a mistake to write him off. You know, his popularity is very low, but he doesn't need to be elected anymore. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, he has a very interesting uh, rejuvenation. Mm -hmm thing. You know, it's not quite like, you know, you cut the tentacle off, another tentacle grows or something. You remove the orange cone at the bridge, another orange cone comes. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I wouldn't, I, I, I would be, I would have been surprised if he took a sports, you know, a sports broadcast gig. It seems too small for someone who isn't um, small in any way. And I don't mean that as a physical thing, but he's... Sure. Uh, it, um, it, uh, it seemed like he did have a good time, but I don't know if he would have found it you know, completely fulfilling in the end. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't even think the hours really fit, you know. It's, it's, it's a hard gig. I don't think people understand, you know, even if you're doing like sports radio, you know, you know there's not a lot of sexiness to the, any form of journalism. <laughs> Come on, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a paper cup. I mean, you know, and it's water. It's just it not is. a, it's, it's. <laughs> oh, but we have lights and we have cameras. <laughs> yeah, that's true. that's true. No, it's all good. It's all good. We wouldn't be doing it if we didn't love it, right? They have this on the four and the five train every day. There are people like taking pictures of people eating their Chinese oh, dinner and great. stuff. And it's just. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Well, um, we would love to hear from you. Uh, we will be having another town hall tomorrow night. And, um, of course, we will be working on um, gathering our questions and refining our questions and finalizing our questions um, from now up until the, the night before the debate, even the morning of the debate. So by all means, we always would welcome any feedback that we have, or, or rather feedback from you. 
and uh, we always love to hear different viewpoints. We love to hear all of the different uh, topics of conversation that you are interested in. And by all means, feel free to reach us via Facebook. Are you are you on Twitter and the whole bit? I'm. I live on Twitter. Yeah. I mean, I'm not as good as somebody else who's got a higher profile job mm -hmm. on Twitter, but I'm on Twitter pretty often. All right. Because that's always. I mean, any any platform that. Uh, that you um, want to uh, to reach us on, we'll get it at some point. Um, can you make this out? I think you need to refresh oh. and go up to a couple of questions higher up. Okay, I did refresh just a second ago. Let's see if I can do this again. Okay, refresh. This is not. Okay. Ta. -da. <laughs> It's not refreshing. Maybe try another. Try. Let's go try this again. And see, it's just not. It's not me. It's maybe the um, maybe the signal, or um, let's see. Let's see if I can learn. I do have bars. Let's look here. Where's my bars? There's some bars here. Do we have any bars? Pardon me, guys. This is live. Um, Facebook. There we go. Oh, we got it. Where we go? It just had to. It had to take a second for a minute. Okay, so Alan Tobin on Facebook. What is their stance on the removal of statues in New Jersey? That's a that's a big thing here in the city in Manhattan. Um, you know, the mayor is ordered to review, um, and you yeah, just have uh, an op-ed uh, somebody submitted for tomorrow. You know, it's probably online now about someone upset about good old Chris Columbus mm -hmm, might might mm -hmm. leave. Columbus Circle. Um, I don't know where they are. I think it's it's an interesting um, it's an interesting issue. I don't know how many. I don't think there's a lot of uh, of, of anything. And I mean, I think there probably are a few things in New Jersey that probably commemorate some aspect of somebody in the mm -hmm. Confederacy. But um, I don't think there's much. Like there really isn't much in New York. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've had an issue with a. Christopher Columbus, or I think my guess is as it comes out on a statue by statue basis, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be on what they represent. I mean, Princeton, for example, though, opted not to change the name of the Woodrow Wilson, you know, uh, school government. Mm -hmm. And Wilson was, you know, no one's disputing that he was somewhat of a somewhat of a racist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know where that's going to go. Yeah. Um, there's, um, I know we talked about climate change last week, but um, this is an interesting take on that question, and that is, how would you make New Jersey a national leader on climate change? My guess is they're gonna, we would, we'd want to talk to them about you know, uh, solar, mm, wind, wind yeah, yep. um, how much of that can be used. Um, I see a lot of windmills in the Northeast when I travel up that way. And, and a lot of, you know, a lot of folks on both sides of the aisle talk about, you know, there are jobs created in that whole industry um, of, of, of one becoming the manufacturer of solar. Um, but it, it, so there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of possibilities mm -hmm. there. I have one more note coming in as I hit refresh one more time. Um, Matthew Brodsky, will Phil Murphy, what will Phil Mur Murphy do to improve the education system in New Jersey? Matthew is um, 16, he's in high school, and he finds education to be an important topic, and um, he sees his local high school struggle so bad that I really couldn't go there. Um, what can be done to improve the school system? Well, I think, uh I don't know if both candidates, but certainly Murphy will talk about the school funding formula has never been properly funded under Christie. Mm -hmm. So that will, that will be one of the things they'll talk about, whether we will actually even fund education to the, to the proper level. Um, I, there's a lot to go with that, I think, with both candidates. Um, you know, Guadano is, is, not a, is not a wealthy person, so she's, I think, much more of a middle-income, middle-class, understands people going to public schools, not to private schools. Um, so I think she's attuned to the concerns, um, but the funding mechanism is the problem. You know, that the, the uh, property tax 
is, is, the, is the underwriting thing mm -hmm. that's funding schools and whether we continue with the formula of, of uh, special needs districts um, requiring more money and whether you know, the money from the richer, more affluent district goes to the, the more struggling district. Mm -hmm. um, those, are, those are really hard questions, uh, I think, for both of them to, to sort of play with because different constituents base have different views. You know, seniors living on fixed income, you know, would say, I, I, I don't want to fund. Yeah. I live, if I live in Clifton, don't ask me to fund Patterson. Mm -hmm. um, yet, the state constitution says everybody has the right to a fair and sure. thorough, efficient yep. education. So it's so We'll it's, have it's to it's dissect that one with, yeah. the, with the candidates. Uh, Lee Clark, what um, would you do to update New Jersey's outdated water infrastructure? You know, that's another interesting question <clears throat> because the cost, I mean, all this, the, the water infrastructure is like the subways in mm. New York. You know, these are, these are things that have gone in over 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. The cost would be off the charts. Enormous. So I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't know how they're going to respond to that. I mean, that's, that's an interesting, uh, th we've run stories about the amount of leakage, the amount of water that get leaks out of these pipes mm -hmm. is, is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So um, interesting question. All right. Well, well, that interesting question is going to be our last one for tonight. It was uh, another great discussion, and we really appreciate everyone that was able to submit their question, and we hope that we were able to get to the majority of them this evening. If you would like to continue this conversation, by all means, join us once again tomorrow, 7 p.m., um, right here on Facebook, and we will be discussing some of the issues um, that are more concentrated to the southern part of the state. But it'll be a great evening, so mark your calendars for October 18th, 7 p.m. We will be there with both candidates, Republican and Democrat, to talk about the issues and hopefully you will leave after that 60 minutes better informed ready to go to the polls and cast your vote which is what this is all about so we thank you for yes. participating in this absolutely and ask lots of questions and hopefully we'll be able to at least and give vote. you a few answers and vote and vote, 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 vote vote you know what i love about but only once <laughs> yeah don't break the law what i love about my um polling site um, is that they always have a bake sale. So you go, you vote, and then you could buy brownies or cookies afterwards, homemade. It's great. What could be better? It's awesome. Nothing could be better I than that. I go for the bake sale. <laughs> I look forward to it. Get a governor. <laughs> Get, a get cupcake. some homemade brownies, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right, thanks again for joining us here. We do appreciate your time and also your input. Um, hope to see you on the 18th.